If you're taking the October SAT and you want to maximize how much you're getting in math and you want to excel from your previous exam, this is for you, right? So my last video was on the English section, reading and grammar. So if you're interested in this strategy, but for those sections, check that out. But basically the priorities are going to be a little different in math. The concept is going to be same where you're still using the ideas of practice, mastery, learning, right? But the what you're going to prioritize is going to be the same. And another similarity is the fact that if you're going for an 800 in math, right, you're going to excel in math. It actually is the same. There is no missing section of practice that you need to do, like in reading and grammar in math. It's actually the same exact strategy, except it's less time required to reach there. You're going to be doing the same things, but it's just going to take you less time because your goal is a little lower. So hi, I'm Karthik. October SAT math, 750 as fast as possible. All right, let's get right into it. Okay, this is something I didn't start with last time, and it's this idea that the only things like, what do you really need to make all this possible? So somebody asked me right after I published that video, is this actually possible? Can I actually do this? Is this something that's achievable? And of course it is. It is most definitely possible. Think about this idea that there might be someone just like you with the same time constraints as you, but they put in a little more effort or they get a little higher score, right? Is that possible? Of course it is possible. Therefore, it is possible for you as well, right? There's probably someone in the world out of the 2 million SAT takers, you know, just in the US alone that there's some person who has similar circumstances to you who has scored higher than you. So it's definitely possible for you. But basically, the main drivers of this process, right? The foundation that you have to predicate everything on is this idea that you need to believe that it will work, right? Whether you want to call that placebo or whether you want to call that, you know, some sort of belief that either way you need to have it and effort. You need to be put willing to put in so much volume, as much as you possibly can until your next SAT. Those two things, right, are scientifically proven for being a factor of success in the SAT. They did this study where they tried to figure out how students who had the highest improvement did what they did. And they found that they did an extreme amount of practice problems, right? Their volume was actually insane. So they did more than anybody else. And they believed it was possible. They believed they could do it. They believed they could achieve it. And I know it is possible. And you should be able to believe that too, right? Don't expect doing one hour of day of SAT is going to lead you to a 300 point increase. That is not feasible. And the reason that's not feasible is because you don't, you aren't putting in enough effort, right? You need to be put, willing to put in more than one hour a day if you want to see more than a 300 point increase. If you want to see 300 point increase, you got to be doing as much work as possible, right? I cannot emphasize that enough. This only works if you do as much as possible and you believe that it's possible. All right. So getting into the strategy. What are like, you, you already know how everything is supposed to go, right? You already know that you need effort and belief. What are things you actually do? So you start with the practice exam, take one today, take one a couple hours from now, after you've seen this video, just do it as soon as possible. You need to analyze where you are in every single math skill. And when I mean practice exam, if your only focus is math and improving your math score, then just take the math section. Do you don't need to worry about the other one if you don't care about improving it, right? So analyze what you do in that, right? analyze your like what type of skill that you're in for it, right? Are you in the learning stage where you don't know it at all? Are you in practice where you know it, but you still make mistakes solving for it about half the time, or if not more than that, right? And mastery, you almost never make mistakes, but almost like 10% of the time, you'll make a careless mistake, or you'll make something that you could have easily avoided, right? So find all the skills that are in all of these categories, right? If you get never get it wrong, like, and you've taken so many exams, right, then you don't need to worry about it. It's not in the category, right? But if you're learning the skill, you definitely need to focus on it. That's the first thing you should be focusing on. Find the official name for the skill on the SAT website. If you're taking a practice exam, it's probably on your answer key with all the things and the difficulty of every question, right? So find the correct name for that skill and practice that skill. Practice the portion of the question that's in that skill. Learn the things that you don't know externally. This is the biggest thing because you won't potentially know what you don't know right? You're not going to magically figure out how to solve something if you've never known how to solve it, right? So you need to extern, like refer to something externally, right? And that's either people with more experience than you, Khan Academy, math YouTubers, you know, wherever you can find new accurate information that's trustworthy, right? So pick that and then prioritize everything that is in the learning stage over everything else. You need to get everything in the learning stage to at least practice, if not mastery by the, by the date of your next SAT. Okay. So practicing effectively. 
Now, because of this strategy, how it works, you need to retest. You need to retest as like fat, as honestly, as much as you can. You learn a couple new skills on day two, right? You took your practice test day one, day two, you practice day three, retest day four, maybe retest again, right? Test as much as possible because you don't know where all of your gaps are and finding what phases everything is in is going to require more than just like two or three SATs, you know, try to take as many as possible. And you know, now that you're in this practice stage, right, you've learned all the skills, and they're all moving to the practice stage, and everything that could have potentially been in the learning stage from previously is going into the like practice stage or in the mastery stage, you need to use the SAT suite bank, right, the sweet question bank, that's where you find a bunch of questions with the exact skill that it's testing the exact type of problem and the difficulty do like all easy, all the easy questions you get correct, all the medium ones, you might be learning them. So they might be difficult, but you should work to this idea that you're going to get all those correct and even start getting all the difficult ones correct, right? And use Khan Academy. They have videos on every single skill and they generate practice problems for you that progressively get harder as you get more of them correct. And they have hints on how to do every single question, right? Figure out what skills you get wrong because of this lack of practice, right? And that's like how you know you're in the practice stage and you need to use these two resources to get to that. And obviously this part is completely about volume. There's no shortcut to this idea that like you can get through the stage any quicker than anybody else. It's all about how you learn and how quick you learn. That's like almost preset. So the only thing we can do now is practice more than anybody can, right? How do you stay motivated for this? How do you stay like with this idea that, oh my God, I need to do like five hours of work every single day. And I don't know how I'm going to have the time or manage or like the motivation for that. Understand this, right? The impact that the SAT is going to have for your life is almost exponentially giving. It's the college that you're going to in, get into. It's what you're going to do. But the time you have to prepare for the SAT is like less than 0.01%, right, of that entire duration. You can have fun at the all the rest of the other time, but in this small bit of time that you have to prepare for the SAT, give it your all. Have no regrets. Say that you practiced and you practiced relentlessly and you know you got a higher score than you did previously and you're proud of it because there's nothing more you could have done. That's how you should think about practicing, right? Is mastery really needed? So for math, it definitely is, right? Because in the August curve, minus five questions wrong is a 750. Minus five questions wrong. You can only get five wrong. So it's never, you should never get easier medium questions wrong ever, right? You need to get up to that level where you're acing every single one of them. Now for hard questions, you actually do need to get a, a big majority of them correct, right? Around 80%. I think that's being lenient. Actually, it might even be 90%, 95%. You can only get, ever get like a hard question wrong every once in a blue moon and right. And to get mastery the quickest, right? Because you don't need mastery for absolutely everything. Maybe one or two skills, you don't get it in time. That's fine. But you want to try to get it everywhere, right? Because we want to maximize our score, even though our goal is only getting to, like, let's say 750. But we want to maximize it if it's possible, right? So understand that you might need to focus more on skills that you find easier, right? Because easier questions or easier skills are going to be easier for you to reach mastery in. So get good at easier skills first, right? Prioritize these and then go down the list and do the hardest skills to get perfect last, right? The math questions that you just find hardest overall, right? Reaching mastery is like on all these skills, it's possible in the time frame if you were to do it, if you use this prioritization strategy. And because I gave you August SAT scores, don't think that minus five is all you need to worry about because the curve might be different for October SAT. So how do you prevent that from affecting you? Like, how do you bulletproof yourself? If you just do what I told you, right? Focusing on easy, medium, and hard and not getting any hard questions, right? Or getting any hard questions wrong, I would say, and never getting any easy or medium questions wrong, right? you're going to be fine regardless of the curve, right? Because the curve is centered. It moves based on how hard the questions are, right? So if you like forget how many questions you get incorrect, focus on how many questions you're getting wrong that are in the hard skill and acing every kind of other question, right? Math is unique in this way that every single skill is well documented and online and you can learn it for free online right now. You can learn it tomorrow, right? This only works with the amount of volume that you do. So think of this. 
you're going to do more in this three weeks, right? The three weeks coming to your SAT than some people do in three months. The amount of effort that you're going to put in is going to be more than other people do in three months. So if you do that, you are going to receive similar like goals or like ideals that people receive in three months, right? Perform the skills that you need so that you can be really good at what you do. And that only comes from doing extra volume. If you do more in three weeks than other people do in a long periods of time, you're going to achieve their goals significantly faster. And you're not doing anything special. This isn't a secret technique. It's just following a special strategy because the strategy is attuned to your specific goal of 750, right? And getting it as fast as possible. And also what you're going to do is you're going to put in so much effort that it becomes unreasonable for you to fail. And that is a second half of one of my favorite quotes by Alex Hermosi. You're going to put in so much effort, so much effort over such a long period of time, right? Well, you don't really have a long period of time, but you're going to put so much effort over the period of time that you have that it's unreasonable for you to fail. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you learned something today.